and welcome to the sala. I am here today with Adrian Gutierrez. Adrian Gutierrez is a photographer and visual artist. He discovered his passion and skill for photography after realizing he was heading down a career path that brought little fulfillment to his life. Since a young age, he's always looked at the world with a critical eye, a trait which has proven to be invaluable in his artistic pursuits. This is his story. Adrian, we're so happy to have you here with us. Thank you very much. for. Uh, I'm honored actually to be being interviewed and for being considered for this project. Absolutely. Very, very excited about it. Listen, the project is really all about people who are out there committing themselves to their passions and their dreams, and you are absolutely doing that. Mm -hmm. So we want to hear all about your story. <laughs> Sure. I was uh, born in Costa Rica. Um, I was uh, brought brought up by a single mother, so I actually never met my father. I moved around a lot. There was a lot of traveling that happened early in my in my youth. Uh, first, we went to Germany. We lived in Germany for about a year and a half, and then after that, we moved to Wisconsin. So we lived in Wisconsin for a little bit. That's a transition. Yeah, it, it was it was weird, you know. After Wisconsin, we moved back to Costa Rica. Then eventually, we decided when I when I was when I turned ten years old, we decided to move to the United States again, and we moved to Jersey, and that's that's pretty much where we've been since. Did you feel like for a time in your life was there ever a question of like where I belong because you had been so used to moving around? Oh, most definitely. I, I think. Um, I always felt I I've always felt like an outsider mm. to be honest like I've I've never really felt like I had you know like a home or like a, a place that I can call home because of that uh, during my like my teenage years that was like a big issue for me like I didn't have a normal quote unquote upbringing you know a lot of people you you kind of just want normality to an extent you know but as you get older you realize that there's really no such thing as normality and I think everybody has a different life and everybody has a different experience. What I want to explore a bit is the idea of like feeling like you're an outsider mm. and I think that you're relating that to moving around a lot but do yeah. you think like also having been an immigrant in the country you know did that have an impact on you? Do you feel like you were ever faced any different obstacles because of your... Big obstacles yeah definitely. I, um, I think uh, you know, being an immigrant, you kind of, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're automatically made to feel as if you're doing something wrong because you're illegal, quote unquote, or like whatever the case may be. I mean, not anymore, but obviously like when I first came, you know, the, those were things that I kind of battled with and I, and I lived in a predominantly white town my, my earlier years. Um, and I think that had a big impact on my upbringing. I mean, it kind of, it kind of made me view um, you know, view that difference, that line. Mm -hmm. It made me aware or like conscious of the fact that, you know, I am not like them and like I, I come from somewhere else and I'm here and I may not necessarily, like some people may not necessarily want me here or like, you know, whatever the case may be. But I think it definitely did play a role. Um, I mean, I experienced like, like direct acts of like racism, like, like very uh, blatant, you know, uh, ignorant comments being made to me by, by grown men, like parents of friends of mm -hmm. mine and things like that um but you know i think those things just make you self-aware and it didn't really breed any hate within me i think it, it bred a lot of like uh conscious and like i became more conscious of like who i was and what i was what i was doing here and how people viewed me you know mm -hmm. definitely so it's like from a young age you were already looking at the world with a critical eye mm -hmm and now you're doing it behind the camera right so can you talk about that transition yeah um so i mean the transition there it didn't go straight into photography i didn't go from like you know coming up and and just knowing that i wanted to do photography photography is actually something that's very recent as i got older i um i started going to school and i think that critical point of view kind of influenced me to go into like political science, which helped mold my brain a little bit, you know, it helped me think even more critically, more so than I was already. And all of this happened and I didn't even know photography was like gonna be a thing. And then came a quarter life crisis. Like, I feel like that's like pretty much what drove me to, mm -hmm. to kind of search for something that I was passionate about and something that I enjoyed thoroughly. Um, so I had already graduated and I wasn't doing anything in the political field, in the political realm, I was I was working, you know, as a pricing manager, um, at a at a you know logistics like broker, and um, 
that really kind of set me off and I was like, you know, like what, why am I doing this? Like, where am I going with it? What opportunities are here for me? Do I really enjoy this? And the answers to those questions were like, no, no, no. And I was just, you know, running into a bunch of walls and, and that led me to explore what I like. Like, what is it that I like? What do I enjoy? Um, because I think that that's like probably the most important question that you need to ask yourself when like you're thinking about your career or what it is that you're going to do for the rest of your life or or things that are going to drive you at least uh what do you like what do you enjoy like is it something that it's genuinely in your heart and you're doing it because of a passion or is it something that you think is the cool thing or the thing to do or you think it's going to give you the most money eventually i you know through like a bunch of different exercises like i kind of fell into photography just um, through like social media, like uh, Instagram was a big part, obviously, because I feel like Instagram kind of gave you a, a platform to to explore photography and, and like, connected you to a community. Connected me to a community, most definitely. So that's that's pretty much how I, I started to get back or started to get into photography. Now the I, I mean the the critical thinking and the um, the analytical point of view, I think it does it has helped shape my eye, you know, and like my vision for my photography. So when you got to the point of evaluating where you were at professionally and asking yourself the questions of, does this make me happy? Is this fulfilling? And, and getting all those resounding no's, was it scary to you or was it kind of like you knew that mm -hmm. you knew that that was the case? It had just been something maybe you'd been hiding from yourself? Yeah, uh, it was scary in the sense that I felt lost. I felt I didn't know what I was what I was going to get into. I, I had various ideas um, that I wanted to explore um, with Illogical Truths, which is my my photog my personal photography brand, mm -hmm. um, but it was a completely different vision, and I was scared to kind of even touch upon it or like expose it, mm -hmm. or I I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, so not knowing kind of like I had an idea, but I wasn't really sure, and I wasn't wholeheartedly in it, so I didn't really want to like go full throttle at it. And I was afraid too because I, I, you know, I didn't know if it would be something that people would like. I think and this brings me to like the topic of like vulnerability, you know, which I think that uh, with anybody exploring anything that they're gonna really devote themselves to, or or anything like maybe career or passion related, you do make yourself very vulnerable and you do expose a lot of yourself and you put yourself out there and you're like this is me, this is what I'm presenting to the world, mm -hmm. and it's it becomes a part of your legacy. And um, that's scary, you know, because it's like, what are you really leaving behind? Like, what, do you really believe in it? Are people going to believe in it? So, yeah, I was I definitely reached the point where I was I was very afraid and I didn't know, you know, is this something that I really what am I how am I going to do this? Um, mm -hmm. But that, but I think that was before photography. Mm -hmm. Like once I found it, I think once I realized like, wow, like this is it. The fear really like went away organically. Like I, I kind of stopped focusing on what people were going to perceive of it and i started focusing on just creating and creating more and more and more and like looking for more and never being satisfied and like continuing to like explore and learn the craft because i learned it from scratch basically you know right. i don't have any like formal education in it so There's so much there that I just am like thinking of. Like obviously the first <laughs> thing that comes to mind is I feel like Erica Badu put it best when she's like, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like that's that's it, real. Hands down, the moment that you're putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. the moment that you're exposing who you are and mm -hmm. what you're doing, it's like freaky as all hell. It's freaky. Yeah. And that's but I love what you said about like but once I found photography, mm -hmm. I was ready to like it didn't matter anymore. Because yeah. I think it's like it's one of those things like when you're really being genuine and committed to who you are, yeah. you don't care what other people have to say as much. Right. But I, I think there's like a lot to be said to like when you commit to what you feel in your soul, like yeah. I'm supposed to be doing this. Like, if you may not like it, but like I, I just can't not do it. Mm -hmm. Like That's true, yeah. No, and to this day I think I still feel like, you know, sometimes I wonder, like, I, it, it's curious to me how, like, people like certain things versus others, and, like, people are drawn towards, like, certain images versus other images, and I don't really understand it yet, but sometimes I'm like, you know, like, I'll like an image a lot, and, like, I'll throw it out there, and it might not, you know, be perceived mm -hmm. in the same way. People might not even, like, like the photo, but that was, like, a really special image to me. I mean, I guess, like, I guess at the end of the day, like you do want people to like your stuff, you know, but 
when you like it, you don't really, you know, you don't really release it or or do it for others. You do it for you because you you enjoy it, you know. And and that's something that um, you know, as an artist, you gotta re- remind yourself constantly that like you know, this is something that I'm enjoying and this is something that I, you know, this aesthetic or this visual is like is something I believe in and it's communicating something. It says something to me, you know. And and then you share that and if if people are drawn to it, good. If people hate it. That's also good, I think, you know, like, <laughs> like good. It, it created some sort of emotion. It's evoking an emotion. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think ultimately you find your audience, mm-hmm. right? It's like the more that you commit to like, this is my aesthetic and yeah. this is my brand right. or whatever it is, you're going to find your audience. You're going to find Most people definitely. that can connect with what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's also very true. Yeah. yeah, you shouldn't try to conform to like to what everyone else is doing or what you think, you know, what you think people will like because you'll drive yourself crazy doing that, you know. Right. I know right now you're also working with other people yeah. and you mentioned your personal photography brand, which is um, Illogical Truths, and then you have the... New, New Visual Collective. Mm-hmm. So New Visual Collective is a, is a side project. Well, not, not really a side project, you know, it's kind of become a... A project just a project in and of itself mm-hmm. um between uh, me and uh four other photographers who are who are collaborating basically it's it's it started out as more of a commercial uh photography brand um because I, I, we're all pretty much street photographers and we enjoy just doing street photography but you know street photography doesn't necessarily yield revenue mm-hmm. so uh so we kind of, we all realize that like, you know, wedding photography, event photography, all those kinds of different mediums, they can, they can help us to, um, to capitalize on something that we're all passionate about. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're trying to use New Visual Collective as, as kind of like a medium to, or a platform to, to work on our professional um, and our, on more commercial stuff. Do you find that collaborating with others helps you grow as a photographer? Yeah, immensely. Like, uh, I've learned so much from like the pe- these some of these people around me, um, some of the people that I'm working with in New Visual Collective, and overall, like in the beginning, I was like you said, I was meeting with or collaborating with a lot of like the community on Instagram. So, going out and meeting with some of these people and just shooting, like you know, they teach you new techniques, they teach you new places to go, they give you a new perspective, and you take the li- the smallest things that like they do, you pick up on them, and you start utilizing them to you know however you want to utilize them. And I think what collaborating with people also teaches you is how important the community is because I think sometimes as artists it's really easy to be solitary mm. and to want to stay in your own space. Right. But A, like you mentioned, we grow a lot when we work with others because they can teach us something mm-hmm. that they've de- dealt with through trial and error. Right. But also, it gets really lonely if you yeah. just stay in your own space. Most definitely. And I think... As an artist, what you want to do is you're trying to show people the world, but how can you show the world if you're not connecting with the world? Mm. Mm. So I, I think like collectives and collaborative efforts are really important to the artist experience. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's how we build. And I think the youth in particular, like we're, we're very driven towards like continuing that collaborative um, mentality mm. because I think that that's like that selfish, like in lonely kind of, mentality of like let me succeed versus like let someone else succeed mm-hmm. is is destructive really it's yeah. not really constructive and you know you succeed by watching people around you succeed and i think some of the people around me who, who i hold closest to me have pushed me mm-hmm. continuously so like to continue to to be a better me and and if it wasn't for them i wouldn't be here you know so mm-hmm. yeah well that leads us to the final question dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> What do you define as success? What does success mean to you? Okay, so and yeah, are you successful by that definition? It would basically be a, a I think um, a mixture of uh, your legacy and like balance. I think it's it's about balance because success isn't something that you can just be successful and succeed across every single platform or, or aspect of your life. There's a lot of different facets to you, and we wear a lot of different masks or hats or whatever you want to call them. So, you know, you have your personal life, you have your family life, you have your professional life, you have your, you know, your passions and all these different aspects. So you could be successful in one, but not the other. And then your legacy, I think, um, having, you know, like building towards something that you're going to be remembered for. I think that's that's really what successful people 
aim to do they aim to make a change or make a little bit of a dent in the world you know and i think that's that's um another thing that for me defines success and whether or not i would consider myself successful um i would say that i am successful relatively successful i guess because i do feel that i'm aiming and working towards gaining balance in different aspects of my life um and i'm definitely building a legacy that i'm gonna leave behind so i think you know my photography and my visuals i think will will be my legacy and they'll tell they'll tell my story in one way or another you know yeah well i think we are all <laughs> and i speak for everyone we are all excited to see where the legacy continues to go thank you i appreciate that no thank you, thank you for the show. and thank you guys for joining us this week on the sala we'll see you next time bye So now you're currently pursuing your career as a musician. Right. And one of the things that you mentioned was that you didn't want to be a stereotype. So that for so long, you ignored that side of you. Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, everybody wanted to be a basketball player or a rapper. Like, that's all it was. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. So it's like, I saw... I didn't see those things though. Those weren't real to me. They were just things I saw on TV.